Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're checking out Australia's new COVID safe app, the application that will help the Australian authorities track coronavirus spreading through the community. Now this app been released just under 24 hours, so it's brand new, and I've been doing a bit of investigation to find out what's going on. Pretty much, it looks pretty solid. That's the end result. It seems nice and simple, not much to be concerned about privacy-wise. I'll explain how it works, and I'll tell you about the measurements I found out when using it, but it just asks you for a name, and it doesn't have to be your real name. I've put a fake name in there, worked completely fine. It asks you for a phone number. All right, it'll be good if you could use an email address instead, but nonetheless, phone number, and you don't even have to use a real phone number. I mean, I've seen a lot of people sign up using those services to forward a text message, so all of you guys are concerned about privacy and all that stuff, you don't even need to use your real number. You can use a burner one, and that still works. And the only time I've seen it access the internet was when you're signing up for the first time, and according to the specifications, I mean, this application is based on the Trace Together app built in Singapore. They have open source their code, so we can do an investigation and a deep dive into the source code over on my XCreate channel. But over here in Australia, we haven't released the source code, so I can't tell you how the source code actually works. But according to Trace Together, that one, it makes connection to the internet once a day to get some unique temporary IDs. And the idea is every 15 minutes, it generates a new temporary ID. And that's the one that's being shared to other devices gets linked together and eventually if there is a flag, you can get notified via a phone call to let you know you should get a test. Seems very, very good, not much to be concerned. I mean, sharing permissions wise, it doesn't ask Google for access to your real phone number. So it just goes by the phone number that you give it and if just check out the comparison with all the security that you give to a standard application, Google Messages, it doesn't ask for too much permissions there. So very much, I've seen it work According to my firewall, it's only accessing the internet once on sign up to get the IDs and according to the Trace Together app, it should only access four new IDs once a day from the server. And based on the investigations I've made using this RF meter, around every 10 seconds, a pulse is made to see what devices are around it, Bluetooth ones, and if they are closer than two meters, they will exchange their temporary IDs. Not your phone number, not your name, the temporary IDs. The server over in Australia, that's the one that has the knowledge of what the temporary ID corresponds to which user, which name that you put in and which phone number. If you go to a doctor and you get tested positive, there is an option here right at the bottom saying upload my data. When you upload your data, that will include all the temporary IDs that you've collected over the last 21 days. And then they'll be able to know who to contact because they have the central source of information. So it seems like a pretty basic approach. I've had my firewall running running for a few hours now, no internet access attempts have been made, so it seems like privacy is a concern. They've gone in there and said, hey, we're gonna be looking at the privacy. Something more concerning I'd worry about if you wanna be worried about something, because a lot of people worry about things, is Apple and Google, they're gonna be implementing this on the background inside the actual operating systems. Now, will you be able to save all that? <laughs> we don't know, so I'd be more, more worried about having a global monitoring system than an individual government monitoring system because at least each government should be worried about the securation of their people whereas a big company over in the west controlling all of your data that's something to be more concerned about i'm sure apple and google they'll think about this in a good way so overall i gotta say it's a simple application it does what it says on the tin i tried to look into it try to find if there's something dodgy going on no, it seems to be using Bluetooth like it says and it doesn't access the internet like it says. Will it change over the next couple of weeks? We'll check it out. We'll let you guys know if anything dodgy happens, but so far, so good. One last thing, I'll talk, talk to um, people that are EMF sensitive. I know a few people that they can't use Bluetooth keyboards and mouse, they get headaches and they get fatigue. I don't know why it happens. It might be psychological, or it might be real. EMF radiation is a concern to a lot of people. There's lots of protests in Byron Bay with the 5G towers. That's pretty much interesting to watch. But regarding radiation levels on the iPhone, I mean, that guy is constantly emitting Bluetooth radiation anyway, because it's constantly pinging all your devices saying, are you trying to airdrop? Are you trying to airdrop? So I didn't notice any difference whatsoever on iOS. It seems like the levels are the same as what iPhones usually emit, so there's not much being changed there. With Bluetooth enabled on an iPhone, on an Android, radiation level with this guy is a lot, lot less. I mean, night and day difference less. I did notice about every 10 seconds or so, it does pulse a wave 
of uh, radiation. I don't know if it's Wi-Fi, I don't know if it's Bluetooth, I don't know if it's mobile data, but around every 10 seconds, it seems to post to, I guess, based on the logic of this application, I think, I don't know for sure, because I haven't seen the source code, but I think every 10 seconds, it just sees what devices are around it and makes a log of the temporary IDs if it's a match. So it seems like every 10 seconds or slow, it does do a pulse to see if there's any Bluetooth devices around it. Probably as an optimization, maybe we consider only doing that pulse if we're moving, but I guess it detects people that are moving past you as well. But it looks like every 10 seconds or so, it will pulse to see what devices are around it. But generally, the levels of RF is very, very low on this device itself. It does shoot up to around 10 milliwatts per meter squared, and this is with just Bluetooth enabled. So I guess if you are EMF sensitive and you want to help out with the tracing, one thing you could do is maybe not carry your phone in your pocket, maybe put it in a handbag, in a rucksack. You can't turn it on airplane mode because that will defeat the point. It needs Bluetooth to constantly scan. But yeah, just you don't need to keep it right next to your, your pocket. You can just put it in a bag, in a handbag, in a rucksack, and that will be far enough away for the radiation to make an effect. It is only using Bluetooth. It's not like insane levels and I'll show you how fast it dissipates as you move the meter further and away from the source. There you go, so around 20 centimeters away, we're in microwatts, 10 centimeters away, milliwatts right next to it, that's 200 milliwatts, yeah, 20 centimeters away, and you should be good. So yeah, if you are RF sensitive, slightly away from your pocket, put it in a bag, and you'll still be helping out with the tracing. There you go, simple. Problem, solution, solved. So I hope you found this video useful. A bit of a deep dive into the number one downloaded app by the Australian government and coming to a government near you, I assume. I hope you found this video useful. Any comments, leave in the comment section below. If you want to deep dive into the source code of the open source Trace Together Singaporean app, check out my coding channel, Xcrate. And most importantly, hope you guys enjoyed the show.